Welcome, Welcome to the Dairy, Dairy Cast, Cast, where we discuss all things movies. Let's go right into the movie news. So up first, Tom Cruise was recently recorded on a set of Mission, Mission Impossible 7, yelling at the crew for not following COVID safety protocols. The video shows him yelling at two individuals who were standing too close together. He said if he saw them too close again, they would be quote unquote fucking gone. Uh, I think he went a little overboard, but at the same time, like, don't stand too close together if there's, like, X's on the, yeah, there's a thing called a global pandemic. As someone who works in retail and is in contact with the public, I totally understand his frustrations, because some people are, like, they take, like, you give them the simplest, like, stand six feet apart or stay mm-hmm. on the stickers. Some people will listen. Other people, for some reason, get so offended by that. And they yell like, at you. Oh, yeah. Not even. Or they just give you a nasty look. Like, I'm dirty. Like, no, ma'am. You just gotta... We're in a pandemic, you know? So I understand his frustrations, but... Yeah, you probably just shouldn't scream at people. Especially when you're such a high-profile person. And, And, like, people have cameras on you. Mm -hmm. I know George Clooney said that he was not in the wrong. Which, I don't think he's in the wrong. Yeah, just, he went about it wrong. I mean, (laughs) at the same time, like, he's trying to make a movie, which it's the seventh movie of the Mission Impossible series. Let's talk about that another time. Yeah, I guess that's enough. But, yeah, it's just crazy, because everyone is so, like on another level like higher like anxiety but tom cruise is like let's do another level of that but it is kind of nice to see a celebrity and someone like that taking it seriously because a lot of people aren't like influencers and stuff because they're the ones still traveling and still you know like other people are forcing filming to go on and we don't know how well they're following guidelines and stuff so i guess in a way it's nice to see at least one person has got their head on their shoulders but again I don't think you should yell at people when everyone's got a camera on them at at all times now, you know? The only thing when I thought of this, um, before we move on, which maybe you have some point or like a point, Mm -hmm. um, he's a part of Scientology and one of Scientology's things is not going to doctors and not really believing like health officials, like with John Travolta's wife, Hmm. she could have been alive if they went to a doctor. But they didn't go to a doctor. So at the same time, it's kind of weird to me because he's like yelling about COVID protocols. But most Scientologists probably don't believe in COVID. Or maybe it's not that he cares about COVID. It's that he wants to check so bad that he's like, don't fuck this up for me kind of a thing. Um, Our next issue is uh, many individuals are calling James Corden's performance in the prom homophobic. In a Los Angeles Times article, staff writer Christy Karras, I hope I said that right, claims the performance is not brave. This is about the long-running debate that straight and cisgender performers shouldn't be playing LGBTQ plus characters. Let's talk a little bit about this um, because next week epi- next week's episode is all about musicals and the first movie that we discuss is The Prom. So yep. let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about this So, <laughs> So I totally agree. Uh, when I was watching the movie, I-, I think he did such a good job that I totally forgot that he's actually straight. Um, and I agree. I think they need to stop doing that. Yeah. Like, stop having straight people. Like, it's not that hard to find a gay man who can dance and sing to play like, his character. Like, they were talking about having Titus Burgess oh or my God, I Nathan love Lane. Yeah. Playing, uh, Barry? I think, I think I, honestly, I think Titus should have gotten it because I love him so much. He's I love so him too. Good. He's such a good actor and he's so good at singing. Like, he deserves so much better. He should be getting all those roles and it makes me so mad. Yeah. And I think, like, having him also being, like, a gay black actor, like, that would have had such another level to, like, Barry's storyline. Oh, yeah. Because Barry is a major part of the movie. Mm-hmm. He's Can- one of the, the, like, yeah. the core four. Core, yeah. Yeah. But he's, like, the number one of them. Like, Meryl Streep is, like, yeah. And then, like, Nicole Kidman is, like, uh. And then like nothing with andrew reynolds oh i know nothing like my son had one line it felt like he had one line (laughs) um but yeah i think that uh things definitely have to be changed with that especially with like cisgendered people playing trans roles like let's not talk about that now because i will start screaming (laughs) um our next one do you want to talk about this yeah 
Okay, on Tuesday it was announced that Billie Eilish will have her own documentary coming out on February 26th. It's for Apple Plus streaming service only, though. Well, for now, probably. Yeah. But the film is entitled Billie Eilish, The World's a Little Blurry. The documentary follows her as her fame grows and how it affects her and her family's life. I think this is pretty interesting because mm-hmm. it's, it's from, um, I believe it starts from the age 17 and now she's like, I think she's 19 now or 18 now. I think she's gonna turn 19 okay yeah so it's really interesting to see because like i mean she's grown up like so quickly i thought like i remember when ocean eyes came out and i it feels like it came out like two years ago but it came out like four or five years ago it's Mm -hmm. it's pretty crazy i know um and like it's interesting to go from the fact of just not like just not just her but her family because like her family's pulled into this like her mom and her dad go on tour with her she writes and produces music with her brother so it's it's pretty interesting i think Mm -hmm. um to be honest this week was a little slow in uh, movie news and entertainment news um so this is just a little little one that we wanted to speak about because Billie eilish is blowing up well she's already blown up but like she's like still continuing to blow up um so this one is pretty uh interesting you found this out on like twitter or yeah Instagram i saw this on twitter yeah. okay sony is reportedly reportedly sorry going to introduce bisexual spider-man in the upcoming tom holland spider-man 3 um i tried to look into more detail and these articles don't go in depth on which spider-man will be bisexual seeing that it is rumored that all three spider-man will, will return so I think that's interesting to maybe it's um, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man or Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, not the main Tom Holland Spider-Man. Uh, it should be noted because one of the reasons Andrew, Gar- Andrew Garfield got let go from his series was because he wanted a queer Peter Parker slash Spider-Man. Um, this raises a lot of discourse from fans and even brings up the fact that MCU Peter Parker Spider-Man is more like his Spider-Man counterpart, Miles Morales. Um, Miles Morales' storyline is literally like Peter Parker's storyline, that he follows someone. It's not like he has his own um, story, like in the other, in the Spider-Man, in the Spider-Man Peter Parker comics. Um... And the MCU does strip Parker of his qualities, like, half the people that are Spider-Man fans don't even realize he's Jewish. Um, He was bullied from a young age, and he's a self-made man from a lower-class family. So, how do you feel about this? This is, like, wrapped up into one. Yeah, so I love the idea of queer superheroes and, like, adding that in and stuff. Um, And it made me really mad when I saw this pop up and someone was someone quote to, tweeted it was like was it is this really necessary blah 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 like going on and on and i'm like honestly yeah it is because w- w- is it necessary that every single um hero or like the starting point for everything is straight yeah like that's the norm like why why is why is it always such a conversation when they want to make a queer character like why does it bother you so much that this made-up person is gay yeah like why do you have like and and then to to add oh not to be homophobic if you have to clarify that it is like yeah you're being homophobic yeah. if you have to clarify that you're not being homophobic yeah like it's just like clarifying if like oh I'm not a racist y- yeah yes, oh you are. yeah yeah um we're big Spider Man fans mm-hmm. um and I think that it like we should have queer superheroes. The thing is that I don't think we need to adapt a character that's been, you know... Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's Spider-Gwen or something that's new, like, you can add to it. But, like, you know, I I mean, you already have a baseline. He's in, he's, like, in five or six movies. It's not going to be Tom Holland. It's going to be a side character. Yeah. Every single time we see, like, in Avengers, I I think it was Endgame or Infinity War, they were like, there's going to be a queer character. And he was literally, like... My husband died, and that's it. That's all you had. Like, that's yeah. not... It's like on Disney Channel, when they finally added, like, they are adding gay characters, but it turns out it was just two moms, Uncle Luck Charlie, that were there for, like, an episode. Yeah. It it sucks. And, and it was, like, kind of mentioned, too. It was yeah. like, the moms, you know, whatever. It, it definitely 
needs to be normalized more and we hope to talk about it more often on this podcast scene that we're we are queer individuals and uh yeah we're kind of tired of i think everyone is kind of not not straight people not homophobic people but a lot of people are tired of seeing this white heterosexual cis narrative like we we've seen it all yeah. change it a little bit come on guys like not just that but like if you have to add a romance line like if you have to put a storyline of romance and like a love interest and stuff why can't they be gay like why do they have to be straight like why is it such a big deal like if you're gonna make a big deal about them being with someone why can't they be gay you know yeah it's like then if they can't be if you can't let them explore that then why even add their sexuality in there? Yeah. Like, if it's not that big to the plot, then why are you going to add it in there? Mm-hmm. You know? So, it, it sucks. Think yeah. about it, guys. Tell us what you think in the comments below. Uh, we are going to talk about our pick of the week. Uh, Tony, your pick? Uh, my my pick this week is actually the new Borat movie. I finally got around to watching it. It's Borat subsequent uh, movie film. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting title. Yeah. Um... I thought it was really funny. There were definitely some scenes that, even watching alone, I was uncomfortable. I don't know if it's just me being a P word, but, like, <laughs> I was like, oh, God, this is so uncomfortable to watch. I thought it was really funny. Okay. Um, I don't I don't know if I want to give away too many scenes, but, yeah, like, I haven't rest seen in, yeah. the film or I haven't seen the other one either. Um, rest That's in one. peace to the monkey. Oh, gosh. <laughs> That's okay. in the movie, Johnny. Rest in peace. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Just it was really funny. Okay. Sasha Baron Cohen, yes. Isn't it an Amazon Prime original or yeah, something? It's, okay, so it's totally only watch it on it's, Amazon Prime. Mm-hmm, but thankfully, it's available on Prime, so you don't have to rent it. Yeah, you just watch it. Um, it was only like an hour and a half long. I thought it would be a lot longer for some reason. Uh-huh. Usually, those kind of movies are pretty long. Um, it was good. Um, it took place during this time, like okay. when COVID hit and stuff. Uh-huh. So it had in the beginning, it was like you know pre-covid but then like i think somewhere around the middle that's when it started to or like some yeah somewhere around the middle that's when it happened and it it was just really funny to see and sasha baron cohen is great he was great in the trial of the chicago seven too Mm -hmm. i find him such like an interesting actor because he's not just he's like making these stupid films yeah but but then he's like really talented he's really talented and he's he's a huge activist for like judaism um anti-semitism like not not like you know yeah because that's like the point of these films like even borat too like i know the whole whole thing like oh it's borat he's funny he's got an accent he's yeah. doing things but if you really watch and listen to like the points he's trying to make and the jokes he's trying to make like there there's reason behind it you yeah know? he's just trying to call people out for things and i really liked it and that's why i really enjoyed this movie although i wouldn't you know like i i, I usually tend to watch movies with my dad this is definitely not something i'd watch with him something i'd stick with watching with like a friend or something but uh-huh. yeah oh and i want to say the babysitter who was babysitting his daughter she's um this older black woman she uh-huh. was amazing because okay. you know she 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 thought this was serious you know she thought this was real because you know like uh-huh. she's older so i don't think unless she's seen borat the original yeah doesn't know who he is or what this whole act is so she was like taking everything seriously and she was like so nice to him and like our, um his daughter and stuff and like she had really good advice she had a really oh, good gosh. heart so like I forgot her name, but, like, go you. She was the true, <laughs> true queen of the movie. I loved her. So, uh, my pick of the week is the one-off special episode of Euphoria called Trouble Don't Always Last, part one, Rue. It was directed by the creator of the show, Sam Levinson, and it was released on HBO, HBO Max. I keep talking about HBO, HBO Max, but you got some good content. Um, it was filmed during the last couple months of the pandemic. The tagline is, this is not season two. The plot picks up right after the season finale. Um, and it's literally just, it feels like it's like a one-off scene where it's just um, her spon- Rue and her sponsor um, at dinner on Christmas Eve. And she talks about her feelings about drugs, religion, and jewels after her drug relapse. Uh, Euphoria is one of the best television series series I can't serieses <laughs> on TV right now. Um, everyone knows that on social media. That's why I definitely had to talk about this episode. Zendaya is a is the queen yes. of acting. Uh, she deserves all the awards, and I hope she gets some more. And also Coleman 
Domingo. I hope I said your name right. But every time I see you in a movie or a TV show, you're you just like are spot like you're like a spotlight. Like you're like a such a small character, but like you're so memorable. Um, he is one of the best actors in the game, and he really carries this special episode. Um, it was nice not to get dumped on with all the storylines. I like how it was just like one storyline where it was Rue and the sponsor, not like I think her name's Maddie, which I would have loved to have seen uh, Sydney Sweeney because it fucking Sydney Sweeney. <laughs> um, and uh, I think Rue needed this special spotlight before season two because I know that they were gonna film like a small scene of this, but I really think it deserved the whole. Um, episode and I can't wait to see Jules's point of view next. Have you seen any Euphoria yet? No, I actually haven't finished watching it. I think I watched like the first episode because it's like free. Yeah, I and definitely then... spoiled that for you. I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. Okay. Um, no, but I like that idea that they, they do an episode like that because I always liked when TV shows, they didn't just have like just a season and then a break and then a season and a break and they, but they have like specials in between. Yeah. I like that. That's cool. That way you get like more content but like you know not like a whole full season of episodes yeah um and our main subject today is dump months you figure this out on twitter yes everything we find out is on twitter (laughs) uh dump months refer to two periods of the year mostly january february and sometimes august september where a bunch of random films get released Mm mm-hmm Um, It can also happen on important holiday weekends and important sporting events for the American box office. Um, Fun fact, the most successful film to open during the Super Bowl weekend is the 2008 concert film Hannah Montana and Miley Cyrus, Best of Both Worlds concert, which took in um, 31.1 million dollars that's insane the fucking yeah. Hannah Montana movie I remember, I remember watching this at the El Capitan theater and my mom was like we gotta get the special tickets we gotta go <laughs> um she was like I am not watching the Super Bowl let's go see Hannah Montana yeah <laughs> um upwards of five or more films get released by a major studio a week but these films usually do better in test screenings than in major box office numbers They usually have less well-known stars. The directors are either not well-known or they're new directors. Um, The the movies are also aren't well-documented or well-marketed. These are usually genre films, mostly horror films, which we talk about uh, today. Uh, Sometimes these movies are targeted towards teenagers who see movies after school. Uh, Movie studios know they won't get tons of money from these movies. However, there are movies that are released that go to Oscars or get high praise. You know, this includes Silence of the Lambs, Silver Linings Playbook, Black Panther. Um, and the movie, Black Panther actually came out during Black History Month. Um, but yeah, but first we want to talk about the good and the bad of Dump Months. Uh, let's first get into the bad. Um, my pick of bad movies was Like a Boss. It's directed by Miguel Artel- Artia. Hopefully I said that right. It was released in 2020. It's a comedy film starring Tiffany Haddish and Rose Byrne. The Google plot summary states, Best friends Mia and Mel run their own cosmetics company, a business they built from the ground up. But they're also in over their heads financially, and the prospect of a buyout offer from an industry titan proves too tempting to pass up. The beauty business is now about to get ugly as the proposal puts Mia and Mel's lifelong friendship to the ultimate test. Okay, um, so this movie was delayed multiple times. Um, it was actually released January 10th, 2020 by Paramount Pictures. It was actually previously scheduled for June... Jeez, this is a huge gap. Yeah. June 28th, 2019. Um, it, it brought in $22.2 million in the United States and Canada. But on Rotten Tomatoes, it only has a approval rating of 22% based on 148 reviews. <laughs> With an average, sorry, with an average rating of a four point two out of ten. Jesus. Peter Travel Travers gave the film one out of five stars and wrote, "What we have here is a comedy on life support, with Haddish and Byrne valiantly performing virile acts of resuffocation." Sorry to report, the patient died. Oh. <laughs> that was crazy. It is marketed as a girly movies to watch with your girlfriends. The tag read out the tagline reads out the world of beauty is about to get ugly. So let's talk about this movie. So 
I'm gonna be honest with you. I didn't need to watch this movie to know about this movie. Yes. I already know this kind of genre of movie. Um, I like to call it the generic comedy okay. because all of these movies, like comedians, will come out. Not even just comedians, just like actors too, will come out with these kind of movies that clearly do not look good and are clearly not going to be some kind of Oscar-winning movie. Um, but they do it just to do it. Yeah. Just to do. I, I just call get it. Money. Yeah, I like to call it the the Kmart. I wrote it. The <laughs> Kmart. The Kmart check. check um, because it's like when musicians come out with a really dorky song, uh-huh. but it's lit and it's like really clean and it's got a really catchy beat to it. But they only come out with those kind of music to be played in malls. Yeah. They and you know just be played over and over again in, in like retail stores just to get that that check, the Kmart check. And to me, this is what those movies are. Okay. They just do these movies just to get the paycheck. They don't expect it to be big. They don't expect it to be great and when you watch them it feels like that too it yeah. feels like some kind of corporate because it's the costume i mean the outfits are nice the the camera quality is always really good you know and it's always full of star-studded people like, yeah. a, like really famous people in the movie but then you watch it and you're just like was that a real movie like, yeah can I actually watch that um I want to just straight up say before i get into this movie is i didn't pick this film to watch <laughs> my mom picked it um, I watched it as soon as it came out on, uh, like, video on demand on the TV, because my mom's like, we need to watch some girly movie, not some, like, indie flick, Emily. I was like, uh. <laughs> Um, I found it extremely boring. I was on my phone the entire time. Yeah. It has such a good cast, it could have been, like, I just knew everything, like, was gonna happen. Yeah, because then I also feel like they pretty much show the whole thing in the trailers. Yeah. Because since it's not a mystery or, like I said, some kind of fun, exciting movie, there's not much to, to hide, you know? They're gonna put it yeah. in the trailer. Um, it was a good concept that could have been written and directed better. Um, also, Billy Porter's in it, and Billy Porter is fucking amazing. Watch Pose if you haven't seen Pose. I love Pose. Um, but he is, he plays, like, the biggest homo. Like, you know that he's gay, but he's going to give you 300% more gayness. Hmm. Like, you get me? Yeah. And when people do that, I feel, like, I know Billy Porter is gay as hell. But he has, like, a, let's stop there. And the movie went way over it. Yeah. It feels like it put, like, homophobia to it a bit. Yeah, because they over-exaggerated. They yeah. made him a, what would he call it, um, like an ascot wearing gay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think a movie from 2020, even though 2020 has been a horrible year. Yeah. I don't think a movie that was released in 2020 needs to have stuff like that. Yeah. Let's go on to movie number two. <laughs> Monster Trucks. Bad movie number two. Directed by Chris Wedge. It was released in 2016, which is funny because it feels like it was released a lot farther. <laughs> Even though it's a dark video. Um, <laughs> it feels like it was released forever ago. Still filming um, in the car, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, the genre is monster in action. According to Google, the summary is looking for any way to get away from the life and town he was born into. Trip, played by Lucas Till. I don't know if anyone remembers him. He was in the Hannah Montana movie. Anyways. Um, and he's a MacGyver now. Um, a high school senior builds a monster truck from bits and pieces of, of scrapped cars. After an accident at a nearby oiling drill site, displaces a strange and subterranean creature with a taste and talent for speed. Trip may have just found the key to getting out of town with the most unlikely friend. <laughs> um, so, Monster Trucks grows $33.4 in the United States and Canada. Rotten Tomatoes, ha- uh, on the website Rotten Tomatoes, the film has an approval rate of 31% based on 96 reviews and an average rating of 4.47 out of 10, which I didn't know this movie could be better than, like, a boss. Uh, yeah, let's well, say that why did this do better than like a boss? Maybe because it was for kids. Yeah, uh, it was a Nickelodeon production. Oh, um, due to hundred and t- due to its one hundred and twenty five million dollar budget, as well as additional amount spending on promotion, the film was labeled a box office bomb. Dang, the film lost the studio 
$123.1 million. Jeez. That's... I'm never going to earn that money in my life. Oh, yeah. I will never see that amount of money. The release date was shifted several times, just like like a boss. It was initially set for May 29th, 2015. But on January 26, 2015, the film was pushed back to December 25th, 2015. And then it was pushed again to March uh, March 18th, 2016. And then pushed back one final time to January 13th, 2017 for its full international release. Why do movies get pushed back so much like that? I understand pushing it back another month or two months, but like A whole from January years. to September. Sub- to december like what yeah why um well first of all lucas till deserves better oh yeah and his hair deserves better hannah montana the movie to this shit like (laughs) i know like seriously when i saw him in the hannah montana movie i thought he was gonna be like the next it boy same like from then on he was gonna be like everywhere plastered on every magazine he was gonna be like the thing like be in every movie and stuff like basically like taylor lautner but no. Nope. Not at all. Not even close. <laughs> this movie is a whole mess. Yeah. It's a whole mess. Uh, to be honest, we wanted to speak about this movie because of the audience reactions and negative buzz. But when we started watching this movie, we decided it was a whole fucking mess. Yeah. Um, besides, like, the, ca- the cast is amazing, though. Mm-hmm. Like, you have Thomas Lennon from many, many popular comedies... Holt McCaney from David Fincher's Mind Hunter, Danny Glover from Sorry to Bother You, The Royal Tenenbaums, and other films, and Rob Lowe. Like, <laughs> and I realized Samara fucking weaving from Ready or Not is in this movie for like a quick second. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's so much you could have done with this plot. <laughs> yeah. I am visibly, like, rubbing my forehead in pain. I I feel like children films the last few couple of years have been pretty hit or miss. Yeah. Like, it's really rare to find a good one. Like, even the Addams Family movie, I don't think it did all that well. No. I don't think it was... I I mean, I didn't watch it. It didn't look bad, but I I don't think it was was good. uh, Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't think it was... It was what people thought it was going to be. But we're getting a second one. They're coming out with a second one. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think just the last few years, it's like really hit or miss. Like, you can either get a good one, or I should say an okay one. Yeah. Or they're all just like... Bad. Bad. <laughs> um, also, why does the monster look like a shark? I know. That got into the car, that got stuck in the car. I mean, it's supposed to be like a subterranean um, creature, but like... I don't know. I just thought it was fucking weird looking. Yeah. Smooth and slimy. It had a good plot idea. Could have been done a lot better. It was executed and marketed horribly. And it could have been like a cool horror movie like Christine. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, it didn't need to be about... And Lucas Till doesn't even look like a teenager. I know! He does not look like a senior! He played a teenager in, like, 2008 for the Hannah Montana movie. This movie came out in 2016. He's supposed to be a 16-year-old. Yeah. That's another thing. Why don't they fucking hire teenagers to play teenagers? Yeah. Don't understand that. So we're gonna go straight to the good... Two good movies that we um, are gonna talk about today. Um, both of them are in the horror genre. Uh, the first movie is Annihilation. It was directed by Alex Garland, who also directed Ex Machina. It was released in 2018, and it's a science fiction horror film. It's based on a book of the same name. The Google plot summary states, Lena, a biologist and former soldier, joins a mission to undercover what happened to her husband, Oscar Isaac. Inside Area X, a sinister and mysterious phenomenon that is expanding across the American coastline. Once inside, the expedition discovers a world of mutated landscapes and creatures. As dangerous as it is beautiful, that threatens both their lives and their sanity. Okay, so this film was branded one of the biggest theatrical box office bombs of 2018. Um, it only gross, grossed, sorry, $32.7 <laughs> million in the United States. And on Rotten Tomatoes, it all, the film only, or, sorry, the film has an approval rating of 88%. Which is much better than Like a Boss and oh, yeah. Monster Trucks. 
um, based on 312 reviews with an average rating of 7.70 out of 10. Um, there were problems with the release and marketing of this film due to poorly received test screening. David Ellison, a financer and producer at Skydance, became concerned that the film was too intellectual and too complicated and demanded changes to make it appeal to a wider audience. Can you imagine your movie being too smart for people? <laughs> it's like, I don't think it's that, like, if you pay attention, if you have your phone off and you freaking pay attention to the movie you're fine it's not too intellectual they didn't even do i think it's just because honestly americans can be so dense yeah um like i know so many people i'm not gonna name names but i know people who won't watch stuff like black panther because there's accents in it but then they'll watch stuff like peaky blinders that also have and like (laughs) you know it's like, it's stuff like that it's like is it really or is it just you you know what i mean like yeah. is this movie too smart or are you just dumb <laughs> and you won't pay attention uh, uh producer scott rudin sided with the director who did not want to alter the film rudin who had final cut privileged defended the film and refused to take notes from ellison which i think is a good thing mm-hmm. because there's some movies like like a boss where you could literally be have a bad what's the word um Q, IQ, IQ, and still understand it. And then there's films like this that you need a little bit higher IQ, or just pay attention. Yeah, because you uh, could understand it. Yeah, I don't think it's ever really about the writing, unless like it, it's literally like some kind of scientific film, yeah. like literally like some kind of educational thing, and you can't understand. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's a film, and it's not like experts are writing it. Yeah. It's just a a director's writing it, you know what and I mean? to be honest this film is an adaptation but he the director didn't even read he read the book like 10 years ago and then he made the movie he didn't go back to the book <laughs> oh that's so stupid yeah uh the film also drew criticism for the casting of natalie portman and jennifer jason lee as characters who are in the in the books described as asian and or half native american descent respectively uh, the film was released theatrically in the United States on February 23rd, 2018 by Paramount Pictures, and then digitally in other markets on March 12th, 2018 by Netflix. And on January 5th, 2019, the film was released digitally on Netflix's competitor, Hulu. Which I remember, <laughs> we're still at the movie theater, behind the movie theater, I remember watching the trailer for this, and I was like, I'm so excited, I'm going on opening day, and then when I found out it was pushed back and it was going to be on uh netflix i was like oh, okay like i'll deal with it and then it got pushed to hulu and then it was just like netflix and hulu they were like fighting over it and i was like can we just literally pick up pick a side put it in theaters they weren't even playing them in like larger theaters like hollywood like it was just like in select cinemas where are the select cinemas they're usually in hollywood or downtown la yeah. And they weren't there. Um, I definitely knew that it would change the way I saw the movie. Because I saw, I only saw the trailer in the theater. I didn't rewatch it again. I just knew it has Oscar Isaac. It has a good cast. And I, and Garland is an amazing director. And I'm going to watch it. And <laughs> seeing it on a smaller screen with not so good sound equipment definitely changed it. Because the sound design was really weird. But I love the film. Not just because Oscar Isaac was in it. I don't agree with Ellison. The movie was really easy to follow and it wasn't complicated. And Garland's directorial style, which most of it is very, like, mysterious and, like, you don't know what's going to happen next, fits with the mystery of the whole movie and the Mm -hmm. trailer. Like, you can't change that, like, and make it... Yeah. Yeah. So, our next film is Get Out. Um, it was directed by Jordan Peele and it was released in 2017 and it is a horror film. So according to Google, the summary is now that Chris Daniel, I'm sorry, <laughs> no, sorry, Chris played by Daniel Kaluuya. Kaluuya and his girlfriend Rose played by Allison Williams have reached the meet, meet the parents milestone of dating. She invites him for a weekend getaway upstate with Missy and Dean. At first, Chris reads the family's overly accommodating behavior as nervous attempts to deal with their daughter's interracial relationship. 
but as the weekend progresses, a series of increasingly disturbing discoveries lead him to a truth that he never could have imagined. I could have never imagined this, too. Oh, I know. I, uh, <laughs> when I watched this, that was such a twist. Yeah. So, let's get to the buzz and audience reactions, and then we'll do our talking points. Um, so, Get Out grossed 172, 170, bleh, 176 <laughs> million in the United States and Canada. The production budget was $4.5 million, so it definitely made oh, yeah. money. It was the 10th most profitable profitable release of 2017. Uh, this was pretty interesting. 38% of the film's opening weekend audience was African American, while 35% was white. Hmm. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes, uh, the f- website, has a, an approval rating of 98% based off of 388 reviews and an average rating of 8.3 out of 10. Nominated for a bunch of awards, at the 90th Academy Awards, the yeah, the film <laughs> earned four nominations, Best Picture, Best Director, Best Original Screenplay, and Best Actor for Daniel Kaluuya, who I love immensely. Um, it did only win Best Original Screenplay, which I think it definitely deserved more. Um, let's go into our talking points. Uh, I know that we first saw the trailer together in that scary movie theater mm-hmm. by the mall. Yeah. <laughs> uh, while we were watching, what Split. was it? Split. Split. Which was definitely scary because we were alone in that theater. Yeah, it was I a good movie. I think there was, like, one guy in there, and we were all the way at the top. And there... <laughs> No, I think it was a girl. Oh, okay. I just heard it was a girl. Um, we definitely knew it was going to be a great movie. It scared mm-hmm. us, and the trailer scared us, and we were very, very interested in seeing it. Everyone, I remember when this movie was announced, was really, like, interested in it, just mm-hmm. because Jordan Peele... Uh, this was his first Avenger into horror. Yeah. Um, and like he's a great comedian. Yeah. Like my dad is a huge fan of Jordan Peele, and we're like, I mean, I should say Keenan yeah. Peele, really. Yeah. Um, so he actually didn't want to watch this or us for a long time because he was like, I don't know, I like his comedy a lot better. I don't know if I'd like this. So I, I made him watch us, and he really liked it. So Get Out is definitely next. Um, but yeah, so this film was really good. I saw, I actually saw it at my boyfriend's house with his friend, and I'm not gonna lie, I kind of wish I just watched it with someone else. <laughs> um, nothing personal, there were just a lot of talking, and like, I, I feel like I didn't get to experience or enjoy the movie the way that it should have been, because it's a horror film, not, yeah. you know, wasn't meant to be talked over and like, whatever, but. Um, I've seen this movie a lot, and I know for a white person, that would be, it's kind of bad to say it's like you like like in the movie where the dad was like i would have voted for obama for a third term oh that but was I've seen yeah. this movie so many times um and i love keen peel too too and that's why i was like i need to watch this movie because jordan peel is like the greatest and he does like reflect his comedy in the movie too mm-hmm. um i recently saw this movie the day before my birthday at a drive-in in like Calabasas, but it looked like it was just like an abandoned lot mm-hmm. filled with trees. And to tell you that I was fucking terrified. <laughs> and like when you're in a drive in, like your car turns off after a while. Yeah. So every single time it did that, I was scared. Even though I've seen the movie like five or six times before, it's just everything you see something new every single time you watch a Jordan Peele movie. And I think that's what made this so like great. Mm hmm. The music, or the soundtrack, was also really good. Yeah. His, his movies have that. Yes. Mm-hmm. We love you, Jordan Peele. Yes. <laughs> so, we now talked about two good movies. And two bad ones. Two bad movies. How do you feel about the dump months? Um, well, I thought that was a really interesting topic. Um, like I said, I found, someone mentioned it on Twitter, and I was like, wow, there's a word for it. Because I've always kind of, like, thought about that, and, like... Yeah. You know, but never, never knew there was a term for it or like really what, you know, I thought it was just me being like, oh, cr- like January is a boring time to go to the movie theaters. Yeah. Um, but no, they do that on purpose. And it makes sense because everyone is out of school during the summertime and like actually during November and December time. Mm-hmm. Um, so it makes sense that that's when they do the most releases. And stuff. Yeah. And they want to get money. Like mm-hmm. it's the most profitable time. But at the same time, you could either... You could, the studio could bet, oh, it's going to make, like, Marvel movie money or it's going to make just no money at all. Yeah. 
Um, so we have a couple questions to leave you off. Uh, how do you feel about the dump months? What is the worst movie you have seen during the dump months? Or the best one. Yes. Let us know in the comments below on this YouTube uh, page and our Instagram page as well. Also, let, let us know what you want to see from our podcast. I know if you listened earlier or if you paid attention, please do pay attention. <laughs> uh, we are going to talk about musicals yes. uh, next week uh, because musicals are really fun, sometimes very taboo, and have lots of controversies to them. Oh, yeah. Weirdly enough. <laughs> Yes, um, and so, you know, we're going to talk about The Prom, and we have a couple more movies. Classics. Cl classics, and, and one that we were not, how do I say this? We should have been super high to watch, but we oh, weren't. Yeah. Um, so, uh, let us know what you want to see from our podcast. Uh, thank you so much for listening. In case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Thank you.